Hello, and welcome to the first of three videos that will give a brief tour of the Jupyter Notebook environment. In this video, you're going to learn the basics of entering and evaluating Python 3 code in a Jupyter Notebook. The second video will focus on combining formatted text with code. And in the third video, we'll construct a very simple document with a combination of code and formatted text, and then check out the publishing options and other aspects of the Jupyter environment. Before you begin, you need to make sure you can access and create a Jupyter Notebook yourself. There are several ways to get up and running with a Jupyter Notebook environment, including the Microsoft Azure Notebook Server, Anaconda, Sage Math Cloud, or Pineapple for Mac OS users. Whatever environment you are using, start it up and open up a blank Jupyter Notebook, and then follow along with the video in your own Jupyter Notebook as the video unfolds so you can get practice with using the menu and the toolbar options. So to start with, I am here in my home page for my Jupyter Notebook server. I happen to be running this notebook on the Microsoft Azure Notebook server. If you're using Anaconda, SageMath Cloud, or some other different environment, then some of the things you see here may look different. I already have some notebooks here that I made earlier. I'm going to create a new one by going over here and clicking New, and then I need to select what's called the kernel that I want. Just a word about the kernel. This word kernel of the Jupyter Notebook is the specific programming environment that the notebook will use. This will look different from one installation to the next, but as you can see here, I have three choices, Python 2, Python 3, and R. Jupyter Notebooks can be set up to run different programming languages within them, and that's what the kernel does. If you want to know more about installing different kernels to use, and that's covered in the official Jupyter documentation. For now, I'm going to select Python 3. This brings up a new blank notebook in a separate browser tab. The first thing I want to do is describe this right here. This is what's called a cell. A cell in a Jupyter notebook is an individual piece of computation. What actually gets computed in a cell can be either code or text. You can tell which mode a cell is, either code or text, by looking at this pull-down menu that controls what the cell does. The default is code. If you click on the menu bar, you'll see a few more options. Markdown, raw NB convert, and heading. You do not need to concern yourself with either of the final two, raw NB convert or heading, because we will never use these. So for us, it's only code or markdown. Code is what it sounds like. When a cell is in code mode, you can enter in code interactively and evaluate it. Since my kernel is set to Python 3, this will let me do Python line by line. For example, let's use the first cell to compute 2 to the 10th power. So I'll enter in 2, and then a double asterisk, and then 10. Now, if I hit just the Enter key, all it does is create a blank line. It doesn't actually evaluate the code. To actually evaluate the code that's in a cell, I need to hit Shift Enter. That is, press the Shift key, and while the Shift key is held down, hit the Enter key. When this happens, notice three things. First of all, the result is computed, and it's put on a line right below the input. Second of all, notice that both the input and its corresponding output are now numbered. And third, notice that a new cell is automatically inserted below. Let's enter in some more Python code, this time to print off the first 10 powers of 2 using a loop. Now notice as I'm typing this that the Jupyter Notebook is highlighting the syntax of the code so that the keywords in Python are showing up in a different color and a different font. And also notice that when I hit enter at the end of the first line here, it's going to automatically indent the next line where it needs to be indented. So once that code is entered in, hit shift enter, and we see the results. However, note that my code is slightly wrong here because I only printed out the first nine powers of two instead of the first 10, which is what I wanted. So I need to go back and edit. I can do that just by going and clicking the cell and then simply making the edits and then re-executing by hit shift enter. Notice that the numbering updates as well and the previous output is overwritten. You can use and access previous inputs and outputs just by typing in the in or out along with the number in square brackets that it belongs to, just like you see on the screen. If you make a mistake and a syntax error is thrown, like I'm doing on purpose here by forgetting to put in a closing parenthesis, the error appears below the output, and it usually tries to be as specific as possible about the error. And I can fix that error, again, just by editing the code and re-executing. 
Here's a more complicated block of code that occupies several lines. I'm going to just cut and paste here. And what this does is produce a simple mathematical function graph. What this example shows is that a code cell can contain more than just one command. It can really contain as many commands or even multiple Python functions all at once. So a code cell, in other words, is a place where you can put entire Python scripts, not just single lines. Here are two very helpful features of Jupyter Notebooks to close out this first video. First, if you're entering something into a code cell and you want to save time or if you forgot the syntax of your command, you can hit the tab key at any time and Jupyter will try to complete your command in process by giving you a list of options for how to complete it. For example, if I start to type print, I can just type PRI and hit tab and Jupyter auto completes it. If I stopped at PR and hit tab, there's more than one command in Python on starting with PR and Jupyter gives me a list of those and I can just simply choose from that list. So here I am copying and pasting a Python function that I wrote off site here in a text editor that produces a list of powers of two up to a user specified limit. I'm going to enter in that function and hit shift enter to evaluate it and now Jupyter knows what it is and once I enter it I can use tab completion to call it up. The second helpful feature I wanted to show you is the documentation system. If you're ever needing the help documentation on a command like range, for example, just type the command without any arguments and end with a question mark, and then evaluate that by hitting shift enter. This will cause the doc string for that command to pop up in a little mini window at the bottom of the screen. You can read the help documentation and then close it out just by clicking the X. So code cells are how we use Jupyter Notebooks to enter in executable code. One of the real strengths, though, of Jupyter Notebooks is that you can enter in formatted text to go along with that code. So you can create a beautiful, professional-quality computational document. Text is entered by using a cell set to markdown, and we're going to talk about that in the next video.